Okay. So we're up, we're back, everybody. The breakout rooms have completed. Thank you to the uh, participants, the coaches who attended that. Welcome to everyone that has joined in between. So I see some new names and new faces. Welcome back. In about a minute and a half, we're going to open up the next round of breakout rooms, and you'll be able to choose to go into those rooms. So we're going to have two uh, particular breakout rooms. The one will be Trevor, Brandon, Sharf on Cracking the Code to Finding Love. And the other will be Harmony and Kevin and a warrior and his queen, loving and being loved. So you're going to get to be a, a choice which one you want to join. If you aren't going to join one of those breakout rooms, you can stay in this main room with us. And the speakers that were in the breakout rooms previously will stay here with us and we'll have a kind of a round table, ask me anything kind of session. So it's been uh, it's been really it's been great to hear all the things that are being asked. And uh, no doubt everyone's getting value from hearing what is being shared and be having an opportunity to ask things that, frankly, we just never get to ask. We never get to really talk about these these topics with anyone that's an authority on them. We sort of shoot the shit with our friends. But this is a place where you can actually hear from people that are either coaches, they're professionals, they've done this, they've got a demonstrated kind of proficiency or competency. So really valuable. Okay. Any questions before we open the next round of rooms? No, I think we're in good shape. Last call. Okay, beautiful. It's no accident that sounds like you're leveling up in a video game. 48% of 18 to 29 year olds have an online dating profile. Make them work for it. 45% of people say they're more frustrated with this form of dating than hopeful. There are so many people you can connect with. Should I swipe right? Swipe wrong. Swipe wrong. <laughs> Setting the record straight on dating apps. Everyday people telling everyday stories of the swipe right world with your host, Chaos. Well, I know he had a good time. I mean, if you don't know, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. Uh, that's how we do it on Swipe Wrong. That's how we started. Uh, I am Chaos. I was uh, also a big part, or a part, I should say, of um that great event that was the frank talk summit um there was a sex dating and relationship there was all kinds of uh awesome people that we talked to uh we have some more uh backstage uh i guess uh, main room stuff to speak of uh you can hear some of the more conversation i think it really helped a lot of people uh there was a lot of positive feedback about it and uh working we are working on some more things um and uh in the meantime uh, feel free to check out uh check out this show swipe wrong podcast um 317-426-6616 and we will uh be sure to get whatever you have to say on the air but in the meantime uh have an amazing day and enjoy enjoy the summit you walk trevor yeah. to a room yeah, I did. I walked nice her by you. the hand and daintily, nice like carefully yeah. placed her in the You were seat. a Boy Scout, I think, weren't you? Totally. Yeah. Totally. 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 Yeah. Uncle Gary. There, I, you know, I've learned a lot about dating just to share. I've like just from being around the coaches and I've, I've got a yeah. lot of friends who are coaches because when I was a Boy Scout, a lady was trying to cross the street with packages and she had all the shopping and, you know, and she said, excuse me, son, can you, can you see me across the street? And I was like, what are you talking about? I can see you from a block and a half. You're huge. Well, anyway, I wasn't very popular in those days, but I've learned a lot. I've come a long way. So you set I, I that up like so well, man. You set that up so well. I mean, that was just like, I know you knew where you wanted to get. And you just like, I delivered like this stand up thing is going to be priceless for you, bud. Nice. Nice. That was well done. That was well okay. done. Okay. Does anyone have um, a question or anyone want to ask uh, uh, a, a question? I think Andre's, Andre's giving me the finger. Can you make him the co-host? Oh, you want to be a co-host, Andre? No, no. I was just kind of want to jump in this conversation because you two are maniacs. And, <laughs> yes. Um, yes. And, and, and I want to prompt stamped. people. Yeah, I want to prompt anybody out listening because people that are staying here, obviously, we're hoping have questions. So I'm like pulling that string. I'm like, let's have some questions. This is the fun part. We, sh we just rolled on the other side. That was so fun. <laughs> that was so fun. It was, uh, it was rocking. So I'm hoping for the same thing on this side. Somebody. Well, we had a, we had a good time. 
Yeah, we had a good time well, with Chris on this side. At least. Uh, <laughs> look, we're gonna we're gonna have there's mm. like we got to hear mm. like Harmony and Kevin. They had their stories, and mm. Trevor. They like they got into juggling and stuff. Mm. It was it was crazy. How were the breakouts? How were the breakouts? How asking? were the breakouts? Yeah, Ooh, freaking rocking, <laughs> freaking rocking. <laughs> I was gonna start teaching, but I had a mixed group of uh, married people and unmarried people, right? And the three C's kind of like. They, if we married already, it's like, well, they, you know, we're already kind of doing it. So, <laughs> so I did. I said, well, anybody has a hot topic, something new, and boom, it started. So it went, dun, 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 and it was kind of, it was kind of fun. It was, really, nice. it was really fun. <laughs> it was really fun. Um, I'm, I think I'm better on the fly like this, like in the moment, you know what I mean? Because ultimately it's what they're, they're, they showed up here today because they want something. Mm-hmm. And often we don't know what it is that they want. So by asking, they tell us what they want and they get what they, they came for. So I like that. It's fun. How about you guys? How did they go? Yeah, the few in my room, I asked, um, you know, I I just kind of gave them a brief synopsis, but I, I started off by saying, if anyone has any questions, and I gave a little bit of compatibility, stay in your dating lane stuff. And then uh, two of the ladies had big questions that, you know, filled up most of the time. And yeah. um, it was funny, Andre, because one of them actually was discussing about um, dating apps and uh, finding someone who's not local and, but, yep. you know, but they have a good <laughs> connection. Well, here's the funny thing about that. You know, it's funny because um, she said he's not local and she he is pretty distance away, but he's the only guy that she has met so far that has truly stood by his, you know, his true authentic self. Like, you know, he's, he's, he's basically showing up to speak with her every day. He wants to text her all the time. He wants to say hello. He's really invested in this three week period or two week period that they've been talking about really, Hey, I, you know, I, you know, he even, she even said, Hey, I, I'm not looking for long distance. And he said, you know what? I get it. That's totally cool. And she, you know, hung up with them. And then she was like, you know what? He's a really good guy though. And she said, so they continued the conversation after that. And yeah, it's been yeah. going on for a few weeks. And so I said, look, if your gut's telling you, um, if something that's right, then what, what's it to hurt, you know, because it's like, I feel like you can find love, especially on apps now and online, you know, it's just, um, obviously we want everything to be local, but you're right. I think it's more about guys who don't want to make that extra travel trip, it, but it women is. are, yeah, it but is. women are willing to make the distance if it's correct. So, well, and she, and she works from home too. So it's remote. Mm, so it makes it a little bit flexible, flexible for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, ultimately, you know, I, I had, I think I told you yesterday, I had, I mm-hmm. had a client, and she gets on the phone with me. She's a potential client. She's doing an exploratory call, and I says, "And you, and are you in a relationship? Yeah. How long? Six months. Where'd you guys meet? Oh, I haven't met him yet. The guy right. was in, the guy was in Paris. Paris. Mm-hmm. I told you the story. Ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you think? Wait, that's you, that's not a relationship. That's an illusion, right? It's, it's called movie, movie, like movie, um, fairy tale." Right, like it's like a movie, like a movie. Like you see Tom Cruise on the screen, you think you're in love with Tom Cruise. You don't know Tom Cruise, right? Like right. you but don't. It's, know it's the idea. fantasy of it all, you know. And it's just that's like they, what I'm think, saying. Right, right. And I feel like you know, it's funny because guys, I always feel like you know, it's that ebb and flow where it's going to change the topic a little bit. But where guys, you know, if there's this girl that they're they're trying to go out with, who now they become the friend zone with. But they yeah. still feel like they have a shot with that girl, even mm. though they know that they don't, but they're not willing to give up that try and the chance. And you just watch them just running around like a puppy dog by uh, all, who's taking uh, complete advantage of them. Yeah. And this, the, but the scary part is when the guy goes, uh, I know she's doing this to me. And I'm like, well, then stop it. Get the hell, you know? get the hell just, out of there. But they, some people can't, you know, so right. I, I, that's the other half. Of, I feel like guys yeah. do as well. well that, I, yeah. And what I've, what I've noticed with some people who are, uh, do long-term relationship or long-distance relationship, my judgment, is they're so afraid of relationship that they have these fantasy relationships on the other side of the world or mm-hmm. the other side of, you know, the country. And and they can tell everybody, yeah, I have a boyfriend. She was like, I have a boyfriend. I know, you know, you don't, right? So it's afraid, that's one way, and then try to still have status, I want to say. Uh, because some people will meet traveling. Some, some people will end up at different, they live in different side of the world, but they created a connection and at one point within a year this is the way i see it is somebody has to move if you really have something you can't spend five years because I, I hear the stories my clients you know together five years he lives in chicago i'm in california i'm like really so you see each other <laughs> once every well once a month we know alice, is, alice just smiling it is, it's ridiculous <laughs> Right, so what they do, Allison, they do speak it? up, Allison. Tell them your story, <laughs> Allison. I'm, 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 I'm very curious, curious to hear Allison right now. Oh, because yeah. Allison yeah. also, <laughs> Allison's uh, long distance. Uh, uh, she's um, LA and Chicago, bro. Like oh, you just straight called girl. her out, dude. 
Like, right. Apparently. I just remember. <laughs> I'm how, like, what the heck? Okay, well, I'm French. Allison, fill us in on that. That's all right. That's all right. No, bro, she's going to slay the dragon. Andre's she's coming. Back it down on me yeah. right here. No, no, but so how long has it been long distance? Yeah, tell, tell us your story, Allison, about because I know you'd mentioned something about that to me. And I was like, that, we, I think it's exciting, but go ahead, fill in on how that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It means coach it's the coach. Like, Coach the coach. Coach the coach. Let her, let her talk, bro. <laughs> right. It's been the day. Um, but but what I what I can't what I wanted to actually say, going back to to what you said, Chris, is I think, and this is I'm gonna bring in my therapist stuff, but so much of this has to do with attachment style. And if you are that guy, puppy dog, you know she's playing you and you're following her around anyway, you have an anxious attachment style. And that is why you can't change. And that is why you're stuck in that pattern. And if you're the kind of person who continues to get involved in long distance relationship over and over, you probably have an avoidant attachment mm-hmm. style. And it is uncomfortable and it is hard. And and no amount, in my experience, no amount of just talking about that can change or shift attachment styles. And so, you know, I, I will profess and I tell guys this when I meet guys that I tend to have an avoidant attachment style. I do. And when I did start talking to this guy, we know each other, well, kind of, we went to the same high school, let's put it that way. Um, at first it was easy for me because I was like, I don't want a long distance relationship. So, this is fine. Like we can talk, but I'm never going to date you. Like that's not going to be a thing, you know? But then of course, inevitably what happens is <laughs> it makes it really easy, you know, puts him on sort of the hunter. Right. But also it made it easy for me to just completely be myself to completely be a hundred percent authentic. I mean, I tell him everything that's in my mind and in my head, the instant it is, there's no filter, there's no hiding or pretending I'm anyone else because, you know, honestly, and I can't move by the way in a year. So don't, so I I would caution you to be flippant about that because, you know, I'm a single parent. There's a lot of women who are dating, who are single parents. We can't just up and move, you know, my kids are in school. And so, you know, it, it is what it is this is my life. And, and he happens to be in, you know, the Hollywood world, so he can't move either. And so, you know, but at the same time, I feel like dating, a lot of dating is discovering your own self and learning about your own self and every relationship, not every relationship is going to last, but every relationship can teach you a lot about yourself. And so I really encourage my clients to look at it more that way and to look at more what are you learning about you through this process? And for me, whether or not this works out with him way, way out there in LA or not is it's almost irrelevant because what I'm learning about me is so valuable and it's so enriching and we're having a great connection and a great time. And I'm learning that, you know, I can actually show up completely as my authentic self and that that can create a really great connection. And that's what it, you know, that's what it's all about, right? It's all about that authentic connection. I always tell my clients, they say, oh, I want to find someone to grow old with. They feel in all this pressure, uh, time pressure. I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. I'm like, you could find your dream guy and he could be hit by a bus the next day. So you can't, you know, I mean, it's a little different, but it's like, you can't, be so hyper-focused on, I got to find the guy to grow old with. No, you got to find the person that brings you joy into your life now. And you will only feel joy when you are comfortable in your own skin and you are able to be a hundred percent authentic who you are. That's, that's how, that's how you. And I wasn't judging. I was just, I wasn't judging at all. I'm saying that. You no, said that's that funny. The, that, that, that's, yeah, I don't it's know. Just funny, I, yeah. I'm not sure how that yeah. happened. That's kind of crazy. You, could, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <laughs> you know, but you know, I don't know if if it. And I think in my world, eventually, like in this, this that getting to know you, right? That I think you're right. The distance is allowing you anyway to be super vulnerable because there's nothing to lose. You're not moving. He's mm-hmm. not coming, you know, so there's nothing to lose. So you could be free of hope he likes me, hope I say the right thing, right? All the stuff that we typically do. I'm just saying that I eventually in two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, that's not going to be enough. That's not going to be like enough of a relationship to really call it that is what I'm saying. Long distance is not real. Like it's not real. Like 
it's not a marriage. It's not a deep connection. It's a pastime. It's a my you know what I mean. That's my judgment about it. I had one of those long distance in within six months. I did move there, so yeah, like it was Ohio to Virginia. So yeah, yeah, Mr. uh, Eventually, you move in. Mr. One, one point I just want to uh, uh, cut in here. We have a new uh, guest who just joined us. I think Paula, oh, Paula. from Talk with Sh- uh, Talk Shit with P. Uh, <laughs> happy to talk shit with P. And Joseph Nappy has joined. Welcome, Joe. Welcome, Paula. If you'd like to stay with us here, we're in the kind of Ask Me Anything panel free form conversation, as you can hear. So you're welcome to stick around with us, and we'd love that. Or you can go into the um, the breakout session, and you can you can change between them if you wish. So that's uh, just to keep the housekeeping and make sure everyone's welcomed. And now mm-hmm. I will uh, go for round two. Ding ding! Long distance versus mm-hmm. in person. <laughs> Let's go for it. No, I'm kidding. I think I've said it up. I think we said it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, 50 years ago it would have been pen pals. So to, today it works, and for some, and it doesn't work for others. Hey, at least uh, at least it's not prison to you know out of prison sort of sort of dating. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah here, you know. We know that. that. We, I mean, we all they, can confirm that you know if you're a yeah. lifelong sentence in prison and you have this yeah. person who loves you, you know yeah. that's. Allison, what do we call that? <laughs> <laughs> Hopeless romantic. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's, okay. That's call that anxious and, atta- and avoid yeah, right? it. <laughs> that's just, that's yeah. I, I call it a train wreck. That's what I call it. Right. It's a, dude, it's a, it's a gated community, bro. It's okay. <laughs> gated community. That's <laughs> what <it> is. <laughs> so, Paula at Talk Shit with P, like her, like you sent in a question. And when I was reading through him, I just laughed at your email address. So I just, thanks for the laugh. And I, so let me just tell you, I know Paula personally, and she is phenomenal. She has her own podcast. I met her at Podfest a few years back, but she is just, she's gold. I mean, this girl, she just loves sucking in the energy and she's such an energetic person. Um, And her, her spirit and her aura is just gold. When you meet her, you're just like, oh, you just want to latch on her because she's such a energetic person. Uh, you could like in the email, I was just like, oh shit, I, this is my, this is my, this is my, you know what? We're going to be pen pals, like long distance relationship and shit. <laughs> That's, That's one awesome. thing we could do is, is answer the, some of the questions that we didn't get to them. Granted, there's only Last night? people that. If I got that long one. I got yeah, that long go one. Go ahead. Let's do the long Which one. one? And then everyone can, yeah. can hear. The one that actually, uh. <clears throat> Uh, here it is. So, hey, Christopher and, and Allison, we're going to talk about it. So, um, I got you, Allison. <laughs> so, so, well, Chris, go first, Allison, go second. But here's the question, Andre. Andre, you can listen too. And so can you, Sabrina. It's okay. Joe, you can as well, my bro. So, here is a question. So, take a second. How does a woman pace a man in the early stages of dating when he's coming on strong due to the intensity he feels? because he has not yet slept with you or had you yet. I'm aware of this intensity. It's not love, but more so conquest. It nearly, it feels nearly impossible uh, to not get at his pace. If he's calling and wanting to connect with me every single day, if he's pouring out romantic sentiments, uh, a reflection of his uh, initial intensity, how do we respond? It feels so good. All in caps. She's yelling at me. Stop yelling at me. It feels so good. And I've already said the same things back to him. How do we listen and receive the emotional sentiment, uh, remain sober despite the intensity, and let him know that we feel the same way without compromising our position in the early stages? Ooh. If I don't get on his page, uh, it feels like I am rejecting him and, and not riding the wave nor being on his wavelength. I know I need to pace him to keep tension and desire running high. How do we stay connected, flirt and play, yet just remain out of reach enough to pace the early stages of courtship? Christopher. Mm. So I first and foremost feel like, obviously she's going to have to like pretty much communicate with the guy, but I feel like if she feels like he's bulldozing her still, but yet she's still kind of in it with him, there's something going on with her. You know, honestly, that's like, I don't know if she's trying to be like, I say this in my stay in your dating lane situation where, um, you know, she's, I, she sounds like a people pleaser to me a little bit in mm-hmm. the sense, you know, just because of the fact that she's, um, she, you know, she's got maybe a little bit of insecurities because she, I can, all I'm hearing is that she doesn't want him to be, she doesn't want to be pressured, but at the same time, she's trying to decide if she should give it up for him because he is pressuring her. 
So, um, you know, I, I, I honestly think that she needs to take a step back, maybe just kind of say, look, let's just let's just cool the brakes for a little bit here. Take a moment and figure this out for her own self, because if, if he's just going to continue, continue, continue. And then if she ends up sleeping with them and not ultimately happy with this guy, now she's going to feel like shit and feel yep. like, you know, she's not going to feel great yep. about herself. And then where's the guy going to be? He's going to feel, oh, well, I conquested this. Now I'm off to the next one. So um, I don't care how much a guy will shower a girl if, for the wrong reasons. But she, if, if her red flags are coming up saying that this is not right, then she needs to really let him know that. And if he continues to press on her, she needs to just she needs to end it. Yep. I just want to say one real thing. Um, secure women are flattered by that kind of stuff and insecure women believe it. Right. But a I secure woman, once. but a secure woman will let the guy know, Hey honey, you ain't getting this. Yeah. And they, and yeah. they will stick to you in, but they won't be wavering on yeah. if I should, if I should, if I should, because yeah. like all I kept hearing from that question is like, well, maybe I should give him, well, maybe, you know, in so many ways, because he's given me all this, I feel like now and I, I call it, I owe you something. You know, it's like, I used yeah. to say like, you know, like, Oh, well, let me just, let me just, you know, fuck him because I feel like I owe him that now. You know, because he's put in all yeah. this effort now. Now I need to have sex with him. I mean, no, right. that, that's not right. No, that's, that's not right. That's also not how it works for men at right. all. Well, if I, may, if I may, that's not at all uh, how it works for men. Sabrina, do you have your hand up? Did you, you I saw something. Yeah, so. I, I wasn't sure if you had designated certain coaches to answer that question or not. Chris. No, we're, this is a free forum. You jump in. Like I, I was going to at the very beginning, but uh, and ask that and get everybody a minute. But you know, I was like most guys, I was optimistic to think we could all last a minute. But yeah. um, so, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, it just sounds like. Um, I mean, we we sometimes hear this word in the coaching sphere, like love bombing, right? right. Where someone like absolutely showers you with so much attention and gifts. And um, it's like a very intense burst of like needing your attention all the time and, you know, filling up your cup with that, with that person. And a lot of the times it's driven by adrenaline. It's driven by hormones. It's driven by, you know, sexuality. And all of that is, is, is lovely. And it's not a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, that's the fantasy. Um, it's all of the benefits of being in a committed relationship without actually defining it. But the thing that I've, I heard strongly in her statement is like, she's so afraid of losing this guy. Like if I don't A, B and C, I'll lose him. I'm like, honey, you don't know if you have them to begin with. Hello. <laughs> I'm like, do you even like this guy? Like, are, like, do you even know who he is? Does he know who you are? What's important to you? What you value? This, you get to decide if this is someone that I'm going to sleep with and enjoy that physical intimacy and interaction with, or is this someone that I actually want to build something with? Like, this is the education that I think women do not have because we've been taught that we have to please men all the time. And the best way to do that is to, is to just offer up our, our bodies or play these games where I have to play hard to get. It's very, very damaging. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to say with regards to that. And I hope she gets one of us to be her coach. <laughs> I was I looking for an email. One of us like, I'd love to help her out and say, honey, yeah. there are lots of guys out there that are going to desire you, that are going to cherish and treasure you, and will not put this incessant pressure on you to do something that you're not comfortable doing for fear of losing them. That's not a secure man at all. Right. The so, only other nuance that I heard in that response, because I had read it when it came in, was it sounds like she's saying, though, that she has a lot of similar, like, intense love feelings. And, yeah. you know, we, we well, I don't know if we all know, but <laughs> a lot of us know that when we first are in a relationship, our brain releases extremely high levels of oxytocin, of the love yes. hormone. Um, for up to 18 months, even two years sometimes. And so mm -hmm. literally research has shown that people do see their partners through rose tinted glasses, basically while that oxytocin is elevated. Okay. 
And when it drops is when you actually start to see the real person. But what I heard in that message from her was that she actually is having intense feelings for him, but she's afraid that if she gives it up, she will then lose him, which is just a slight, it's like a slight nuance, right? But it, and I think that that's where it's really hard, especially with someone with an anxious attachment, which it sounds like she does, to be able to differentiate what is my feelings from what is his feelings, because it sounds like she is having feelings for him. Mm -hmm. He's obviously having feelings for her. And she is just not clear of sort of almost maybe like where she ends and where he begins is what it sounds a little bit of the beginning of an enmeshed kind of relationship, which we know is really an unhealthy kind of relationship. And so she needs to be able to take stock of her own feelings and make sure and check in with herself. Am I doing this out of anxiety? Like you guys have both said about not wanting to lose him. Am I truly having, you know, feelings for him? And if so, is it for him or is it for the idea of who I think he is at this early stage when you don't really know someone very well and you're definitely getting you know, bamboozled by your own hormones. So, yeah, so that's, you know, and my thing to her, if she's listening, I would say go on to YouTube, learn how to do some EFT tapping and tap on that because you (laughs) know at the end of tapping, is this your anxiety or is this your true feelings? Do you actually love this person or do you just love the idea of this person? It's a big difference, right? Get it, Andre. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having permission. I think it's much simpler. <laughs> I think it's much simpler than that from my perspective. And let me just explain that, you know, women have to feel connected to a man in order to open up to have sex. Man, man we connect with our bodies through sex. So for us, getting emotional is through our bodies having sex. So men always want to have sex. This is how we open up. This is how we open up. You, you understand? So it's two different machines again. So what happened is, of course, we're, we're hoping to get lucky, and we lean into this. She's pretty. She smells good. I'm attracted. Hormones are flying. That's always the case if you're normal. But the lady is the boundary. The woman decides the boundary. And the boundary is simple. Thank you for finding me attractive. Thank you for wanting to roll around with me. I feel it. It would be absolutely great. I could feel you. It would be so fantastic. However... I don't really know where this is going yet. I don't know what the plans for me and your futures are. Like, I don't know what you're looking for, but I'm looking for uh, more typically like a long-term relationship. So unless I know where this is going, we're not going to go there. But I really like to. I feel it. And we can neck. We can play. But that's not going to happen. So there's a dance there of mixing it up because a man, a man who... Our sexuality leads a whole lot of that drive, obviously. If you're you want you he want he's gonna hang in there and respect your boundaries for months, months, as long as he knows that your promise of you know a, a sexual being on the other side of that. So to respect your boundaries, my experience is men will ask three times. Until he because he gets so a couple of weeks, three weeks dating you. You like him, he likes you, right? You get, so he goes, so like, hey, um, and he goes, thank you so much, you know, for finding me attractive. I, I feel it. it would be, I feel it too. I'm very attracted to you. It would be great. However, I don't really know what you have planned for us. So if we're compatible with the future is yet. So thank you. But yeah, no, right? So, and the guy's like, wow, okay, boundaries, cool, right? He may he'd be disappointed for a minute, but if he likes the girl, guess what? He comes back. He comes back and he comes back. And typically a two-week cycle is a statistic. If he's dating other women, he comes back to you every two weeks. Right? Same story. He likes you. You like him. You have chemistry. So how about some, you know, you know. You're like, ah, I know. I feel it. That'd be really awesome. (laughs) Totally. I like, I'm very attracted to you too. However, when I said I don't have casual sex, I don't know where this is going. I don't know you yet. So, Oh, okay, all right, cool, 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 right? They do this three times. This is men who typically want to build. 
right? Because the guy who just wants to play, the moment you say this, he goes, "Well, fuck this," you know. I'm just, uh, sure, uh, so like, I need, and he's out of there. Well, if you if you're looking to build, good for you, right? This is a beautiful, easy boundary. The third time this thing happened, now you're probably five weeks into it. So like, mm -hmm, I spend like two hundred bucks every time I see you. Like, what that? You don't owe him shit. You're the woman. You're the boundary. You're the gatekeeper. You don't owe him shit. He chooses to spend money. And if he respects you, he will continue respecting you. He's getting to know you, and you keep setting a boundary. Three times they'll do the hey, hey, hey. And if he comes <laughs> back after four for you setting a boundary, he will stop leaning into you. But you could actually continue to discover each other's bodies. Again, by the way, everything is sexuality. Touching, kissing, rubbing, over the sweater, under the sweater, no sweater, right? <laughs> Butt naked. It's all sexuality. However, we don't have intercourse. Intercourse is into the body. So a blowjob is intercourse for men. Don't blow him. <laughs> However, he can eat you out. There's no intercourse there. So you get all the privilege, and man, some men will be so happy to please you that way, right? To please you that way, knowing that you have a boundary. But guess what? <laughs> Butt naked, having all kind of fun, bonding, bonding, bonding. Line isn't crossed. Nobody's compromised. He's not had you. You've not been had. And he will not try to penetrate. Seriously, when you respect that boundary after the third time, he will just literally be happy to roll around naked. Now, in the end, I'm, I need to say this. We're adults. We could say this. In the end, as long as you don't leave him with blue balls, right, which he is let her release himself or you help him, right, he's had sex. Mm. He's had sex and he's good, but and he's he's happy for weeks and he's happy for weeks. <laughs> I mean, this is a man who will respect. Make him sound like he's a snake, you know, snake <laughs> hated a name for another month. He's good. You know what I mean? So again, the guy who just wants to hook up, right, will be out of there right away. Good for you. The guy who wants to build will stick around and respect the boundaries happily. See, that's a good talk. That definitely wouldn't have taken a minute each. <laughs> right. All right. So. All right. But, but um, I think Harmony said that uh, she she thought she knew who sent it in, and it just sounded like somebody was searching for something, and it just seemed like if they took the time to write that question, um, seemed like we should take the time to talk about it. No, that's a good one. And but I think what I see a lot, what I notice a lot, I don't know if you guys would probably pre have the same um, awareness that uh, in our culture, because you know. Even women think after three dates, I like you, you like him, you know, I like him, you like me, let's go, right? Because a lot of women, I see this mistake, I think it's a mistake if you want to build, is what I'm saying. Uh, they think by starting intimacy, they're starting a relationship. And it's not true for men at all, at all. For men, sex has never started a, a, a relationship long, long term. It started a sexual relationship, not a heart relationship. So what I say to ladies, I says you catch him by the heart first. Don't catch him by the dick first, because if you get the dick first, you never get his heart. So leave his dick alone, let him fall in love with you, let him get to know you, hold the boundaries, get his heart. Then by the time you get his dick, you're making love, you're not just fucking. <laughs> Sorry, drop the mic. It's, I'm done. It's, Andre, it's funny that you said that because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I said, like, no. like, like, that's how it goes. That's how it works. I was going to say, Andre, it's funny you said that because um, I wrote a blog post before, before I started my podcast and it was about, you know, like you said yesterday, you know, with your photo of your picture and we can all agree with this, like, you know, the beginning of dating should be like a dance, you know, it's like this big ebb and flow and you're trying to, you know, you want to like lead and like, you know, sway and, you know, and just kind of get that, you know, momentum moving forward, yep. just like a dance. You want to feel on the same, like, you know, wave and the same path and all that good stuff like that. And that's mm -hmm. what I appreciate about it. But sometimes, you know, someone's always going to want to try to lead too much on either end. But it's got to be a you know this perfect harmony type. You have to, to make find it your sway, find mm -hmm. your sway, right? Yeah. It's not this. Right? Take it's, you know, on. They, right. they commit it and get your groove, and this is this is when it becomes fun. I mean, you know, but ladies, this boundaries first, yeah. straight up, and men, yeah. men, natural, respectful men would absolutely respect those boundaries. You know, if he gets well, mad, re respectful men listen. That's why, and that's something that I always try to say with, with guys. It's like respectful guys will listen. They'll let yeah. you know what they want. Like I always tell everyone, I go, I know what I want, but I'm I'm respectful because I listen to what you want, what your right. needs are. Right. And, and what, what did I'm you actually... just say? What was that last point? Sorry, what was that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, ah, look at that. Funny guy. Funny guy. Look at that guy. 
Oh, Gary, Gary. You never listen, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> See how you are. It's always the same with you. <laughs> See how you are. <laughs> funny. No, this is uh, good stuff, you guys. It's really, you know, it's. I, I think the whole thing is really on, not that complicated in the end. You know, for ladies, it's boundaries. Men typically, if they're masculine, the boys don't do this. Feminine men don't do any of this, which is a disaster. So, first thing I teach women is how to spot the boys, so you never get caught up in their bullshit because these, these guys will take as opposed to give mm-hmm. masculine men give provide protect cherish that's what they, that's what we do naturally naturally not no manipulation needed we want to this is our nature boys do the opposite they take they're stingy they're cheap they don't want to share they don't want to pay for you they don't want to pay for your they don't want to, your babies they don't want to be responsible for anything right so they look like the rest of us but they're two completely different beasts and we know there's some we know how they got to be like this, but um, men, men are, you know, respectful. You set a boundaries. If they care for you, they'll be happy to hold a boundary. They want you to be happy. They want you to be good because when you're good, I'm good with you. When you're happy, I'm happy, right? There's no tension in the air because I respect you and I cherish you the way that you, you want to be cherished. And we could find that out together. That's the juice. It's a dance. It's a dance. It's a dance. It's a dance. And we both bring different parts to the dance. And, you know, when I look at my relationship with my wife, what, what she brings to the table is the part that I don't have mm-hmm. and vice versa. You know, like, so we need each other to be a better entity together. It's like it's me and her, but together we create this new dance, right? Like ballroom couples dancing. Like they, the only way to be that is to be in sync. And sway together. And, you know, the idea that I think was culturally a big challenge for women is that go girl, boss babe, badass, you know, lead, get in front of man. That Well, that doesn't work in relationships. You know what I mean? Like, if you look at a dance again, if I show the picture of me and my wife dancing, if she's not passive. She's not less than, right? She's, she's supporting my leadership. She has to hold her frame, you know, to actually for us to be together. She does everything I'm doing backwards in high heels and a dress. That's not easy, it, but it's different. And but that's what works. Okay, now I'm I haven't tried it, so I don't know. But I'm going to take your word on it that yeah. it's not easy. High heels uh, and dress. High heels. Yeah. You can try. Yeah. Can no, try. it's like it really. It just it, it clashes with my eyes. I want to um, see that. Actually, I want to see you in high heels <laughs> and, and bro, short, shorty bro, shorts. If we have some bet going and I lose it, I promise I will pay up. All right. I mean, and I'll tell you what, I will walk from Venice to Santa Monica Pier and we can just roll with it. Wow. But, I, but, can, I, can, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. We have no, about let's ten. not. not can. There was there was a question on uh, uh, yesterday that a few people like earmarked that we just couldn't get to. And I'll throw it out there and you guys can do with it what you will. But okay. the question was, um, why is it why is it such a controversy on women's body counts Ugh. who's gonna take it is I'm there not such it a controversy on women's body counts yes as in the sexual number of sexual partners yeah number yeah. Of sex, yeah. No, i understand what that oh. is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i didn't know if Canada, yeah. canadians i get what you're saying girl <laughs> i think i think uh somebody I think, say uh, I think I think Harmony had this earmarked, and and I forget who. Uh, I think maybe Shell, but I was like, all right, maybe the rest of you would want to mess with it too. Take it, Sabrina. It, uh, yes, yeah, Sabrina. Why is there such a controversy? Is that's that the that's the question? Asking yeah, why yeah. It's controversial. Well, what's the, what's the big deal? If, that's the question. Yeah, like that's a great. What is the big deal? What is the significance? What significance are we adding to how many women have? how many women have partners or the amount of partners women have. I think we're, we are bringing a lot of significance to it because let's face it, there's still uh, a double standard standard about how many partners women should or shouldn't have versus men. But that is all meaning that we're adding to it. And we're not aware that we're adding this significance to it. So that's the premise of my podcast was to eliminate the double standard yeah. and say that women Literally. like sex just as much as men. And that's why I started. That's one of the reasons I started. It. I didn't know that was the premise to it. That's all Yeah. I mean, that was in my trailer and my welcome. Like that's what I kind of allude to is like that. Yeah. Like we love sex just as much and why the whole shaming of it is not mm-hmm. cool. quite. Like I, I've always called it very hypocritical. 
myself. Yeah. So, Interesting, you, know. you guys. I'm totally on the other side. So sorry. I knew I knew Andre is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like again though. This question reminds me of the one we got last night, where there's fear behind the question, right? Exactly. So she's asking the question because she's afraid of being judged. I'm guessing, you know. I mean, I, I guess I'm making it a little bit of an assumption, but it sounds. No, you're right though. But that's what society does, though, as we all know. <laughs> you know, I mean, where does this fear right. come from? It comes from it comes from a friend or a previous boyfriend or someone saying, wow, you know, and so anyone who does that now you're yeah. thinking about it. Now you feel like shit. And now it's going to hard. It's going to weigh on you. Well, so, yeah, I never understood. yeah. What but if, if it, you can work on and clear your own fear around it and you're no longer triggered, then you can enter a relationship. And if a guy asks you, you can say, you know, I'm not going to talk about it, or I am going to talk about it. Here's my number. And you, if you have no shame, it will not be a problem for you mm. with the person. And well, if it is, then that's probably not a guy you want to be with anyway. And so I just boy. feel like that's one of those things that it's just like being naked, you know, for the first time with someone when if you're feeling like, oh, I'm out of shape and I haven't worked out and whatever, you. but the guy's not going to care if you don't care. And so it's so much of it, I think, is about clear. If we can clear our own triggers and our own childhood wounds and our own you know, teenage stories or whatever it is, then it doesn't really matter because it's not going to impact you in your one-on-one -on -one relationship if it's not a trigger for you. Mm -hmm. So that's just... And, and I disagree. And I could talk mm -hmm. about it, but go ahead, Sabrina. And oh. I'm, big, I'm always putting... No, I on, love so. hearing the, the disagreement. Um, yeah, big disagreement. Judging is big. part of dating. Judging is part of life. <laughs> Um, I doubt anyone in this room hasn't judged someone in their lives for something they did or didn't do. Um, we don't need to get so upset that people are judging us. That is a choice that we make when we react, when others judge us. Because you go to Starbucks, you what do you get? You get coffee. You go out dating, hey, you're going to get rejected and you're going to have judgment. <laughs> It's part of it, <laughs> but what, how you react to it, that's entirely a, a your, you, you can author how you react to it. So if you want to get upset about it, that's cool. And that's your choice. You don't have to. And another way of what Allison's saying, like you can own it um, and be proud. I appreciate that. And Andre, I'll let you get to your point, but I appreciate the fact when a girl yeah. owns it. And this is something why, Fair enough. Um, you know, one of the things that I do, I like that's why I have this thing called truth or honesty that I do a lot because I want people to ask the questions. And one of the questions that everyone always says, oh, well, how many people have you slept with? And it's like, if you can handle that question that you've just asked and the person gives you the answer, you should, you should be able to sit there and be mature enough to sit there and go, okay, wow. You know, it's like, it, sh it shouldn't be able to affect you because if you're asking that question, it's like, Already, you're going to already have an idea or this sort of, you know, imagery of this, this person in front of you. Because she goes, well, I slept with one. I mean, to a guy. What, what's the now the guys? Oh, yeah, she's new. I get all this. I get all that. But if it's like I've mm. been out with 50 now, you're like, oh, oh, my God. You know, it's like so it's just it's 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 just, you know, it's just it's just something that shouldn't matter in a relationship. I'm sorry. The, que the question is, why? Why does it matter? Because it matters. Why does it matter? We have to take it beyond like, you know, being accepted and judging and all that shit It's beyond that. It's biology. It's biology. It goes down DNA for millions of years, right? Men, the biggest insult on a man's life is for him to take care of a wife and a child that's not his, right? He's spending his time, energy, and resources. Caveman, millions of years ago, there was no DNA test. So the women had to be virtuous. The guy knew that she wasn't running around going from TP to TP at night for a chicken leg. Right, that the baby that she made that was actually his, right? So women virtue and not sleeping around made women trusting to men. Men could trust my girl isn't screwing around. That's not what she does. So the body count matters because it matters because it, it doesn't matter how you feel about it, ladies. It matters to the men. I can't trust you if you've been around 50 guys that if you're mad at me and I'm out of town, you're fucking the neighbor. Because that's that's exactly where it goes to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know Sabrina. I'm going to have to say that's Andre, a little hardcore. You're talking about yeah. something completely yeah, because, different. Because, right. Yeah. Yeah. Not Sabrina, I'm, it's trust. Because, it's Sabrina, a, if I may, Sabrina, as a man. Yeah, no, on, go ahead. Just keep in, mind, keep, on, keep in mind. Keep keep in mind. Keep in mind, everybody. Hold on. Keep in mind. The, the, break, the breakouts are coming out. The breakouts are coming out. So we're going to have to fill up the room. And all of a sudden, yeah, you dropped the bomb and exploded. And we've got Harmony and Kevin back. And we got Trevor back. And we've got... 
heated debates going. Hey, everybody, how you doing? We're just over here talking about the weather. Uh, things are good. <laughs> you know, looks a little cloudy with a chance of storms. Uh, you know, shit like that's happening. Very Love windy. Love yeah. All. yeah. Look, that's the, that's the beauty of all of this, though. Like, uh, like we're allowed to have a difference of opinion and not punch each other in the throat. This is not Chris Rock and Will Smith. We established that night one, which is good. <laughs> This is all, all I'm going to say is the fact that Andre, I think like Sabrina was about to say, it's like um, that you, you misconstrued the topic of what, how you were saying, I get what you were saying, but that sounds like more of a, you were getting more of a cheater's mentality versus a woman who just has been dating along the way on her free time in the free space of just, you know, out in the space of just, Hey, I'm single. I want to have some fun. I, I, I think every woman to me, when you're single, like when I tell a lot of women, I say, look, if you just want to go out and have sex right now, go out and have as many as much sex you want. You're free to do what you want to do. But I, I think you're talking more about, you know, it sounds like Sabrina, correct me if I'm wrong. It made it sound like you're saying that the woman is with this guy is going out behind this guy's back in theory no, or, no, no, or no. doing. No, but no, that's no, what no. it sounded like. Right. Sabrina? Okay. Well, that I didn't finish. It, it wasn't like some woman who was just like single and being being free and going on her sex in the city. I, I'm not saying I'm saying say, say this is how the men see it. This is how I'm going to be said. If you're a girl who goes around and has sex for sport, I don't know if I kind of build I could build something and trust that in you. So it does matter. And again, it doesn't matter whether the woman feel judged about this is the man who want to build will have judgment about that. And those guys but they, they 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 react negatively to that kind of behavior. Like it's where you've been that matters. See, women like men who knows where they're going. That is a good candidate for a future, right? That's how women pick men. Men look at women for where you've been to, for, to be a good wife material. That's all I'm mm-hmm. saying. So this is where it matters, and it's also this is all anthropology stuff. It's sort of there was no DNA test for millions of years. I'll, I'll take experience over yeah. matters any day with that being said. Listen, like, listen, I, I, take, and listen, I will. I'm I'll French. take an experienced woman. Yeah, I'm French. I okay. get it. Okay. You guys, so you guys hug it out. Hug it out. Hug it out real quick. I'm, hug I'm, it out. I'm, I know you're all good. I know, but we're going to hug it out. We can have some right now in LA. We're good. Gary's got his hand up and he's not wearing deodorant. So somebody please let Gary talk. Okay. That was fun though. That was fun. That was good. Good discourse. This is great. Good discourse. The women are going to stab you, but it was good discourse. Bring it. <laughs> so we've got to uh, we've got to move to the next section of this in respect of everyone's time. I'd love to uh, to give out the mouth guards and bring out this water bottle, spray everyone's teeth and face, and they can come out punching. But it's good. This is these are topics that are contentious, which is why having these kind of conversations is so valuable. We don't get to talk about this kind of thing in our daily lives. We sort of just talk about it with our friends, like I mentioned earlier. So really healthy dialogue, the vibrant debate. We got into some good topics. And we're now at the end of our second night of the summit. So a huge thank you to everybody who came out. You all had many places you could be. This was really generous of you to spend your time with us and listen to what was shared. And thank you for being interested in your dating, in your relationships, in your sex life, interested enough to take the time to come and listen to something. It means you're you're committed to it. You have an interest in it that you're actually looking to accomplish something. So that's a really powerful thing. Thank you for being willing to enter what for many people is not a safe space or a painful space or a a difficult space. It it really does take something to be with us. And we do truly appreciate it. With that, I think we're going to go just once around the horn. If everyone can just say a a quick thank you for the participants. I'm going to ask the speakers to just say goodnight. Anything you want to share, we will send out a completion email to everyone who registered so that you have all the contact details. If you do want to make contact, if anyone's got a course or a an offering, or I know some of the coaches have a downloadable book, or you can purchase their book. Some of them are giving away their book for free at the moment. So you really want to take advantage of the offers. We'll include that in an email for you so that you can follow up and keep that uh, top of mind should you wish to pursue anything. And so let's go through. Chris, I'm going to ask you to go through the roster of speakers and uh, just get a one, one, one sentence from each of them as a thank you as we close out the night. Sounds good. We haven't heard from from the RN in a while. She's been in her breakout room, so I figure she might as well kick us off. So, Trevor, why don't you why don't you say your say your say your goodbyes? On mute, Gary muted uh, you again. He did this to you last night too. He's just Gary, ruthless. Stop Rude. putting the muzzle on me. He's he's ruthless. <laughs> Rude. You can't keep a good woman down, nor can you shut her up. Okay. <laughs> 
so hubby is back home. He's feeling better. Just wanted you to know. So good, uh, he, good. My, my husband was in the hospital uh, uh, earlier this week, so he's home. It's good. Um, I just want to say to my fellow coaches and um, colleagues, you guys are just a righteous, awesome bunch of people. I want to know you forever. I want to work with you again. I've so enjoyed getting to know you. Each and every one of you are so talented and smart in your own way. You have gifts and anybody on this summit would be lucky to work with you. I highly recommend these people, all of them. Um, I've just enjoyed every every minute of this. In, the planning was great. The execution was great. To the people that joined, um, we were talking about balls earlier, and I just want to say it's just, it took <laughs> it took balls to do this, right? It takes right. balls to show up and to put yourself in a Zoom and and to want to know more and improve. It really takes courage. I applaud you. You need to keep going on your journey to keep doing things like this, find people to work with and books to read and coaches to coach you. It's really, really important. I said in my breakout session, I wish I had someone like me back when I was single to help me. Um, I cannot tell you the, the benefit of having someone in your life that believes in you and that can help you along your journey and that's all i have to say and i need nice. a drink you guys and i yep. need a yep. Down, right? yep. shots shots we got about four uh. got about four minutes left so let's go with uh harmony and kev wow i just again i like to say thank you to all the people who are on the panel i just blown away by by you I thank everyone again who showed up i see so many faces i know and faces i don't Thank you so much for showing up and being a part of that and supporting us and um, love to you all. And I just want to say, ditta, ditta, it's what Trevor said. Isn't she just the epitome of class and grace? Beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. The uh, head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and special teams coach of the love train. Let's go with Sabrina. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> what, an, what an introduction and a way to close it. I, I wanted to, I, I acknowledge everyone for coming out tonight. You could have been doing lots of different things. We're all very busy, powerful people, and you chose to be here. And that says something about every single one of you that you came here to do some work on your relationships and on your love lives and on your sex lives. You put aside the time and you showed up for yourselves. So I acknowledge every single one of you and my fellow coaches. You're amazing. I can't wait to do this again. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And my guy, Andre Paradis. You really want to talk to me? <laughs> Bro, we're still besties. <laughs> I know. Love it. So I, I just want to say for everybody who showed up and, and I'm always flattered when people would actually, like Sabrina just said, stop, take the time, plan and sit and, show up I, I i find it very flattering it's a huge honor for me that people are curious and willing to listen to me us so kudos for you guys and keep pushing keep learning i my job for me my mission in the world with the relationship dynamic is to uh, simplify the whole game it's actually much simpler that we make it uh, what's out there in our culture is making it more complicated. I'm just going to say my judgment, but it doesn't have to be. And if I want to spread a message of there, it is doable. It is easier than you think. And there is hope, ladies. There is hope. I don't care how old you are, whether you're young or old, divorced and or widower, right? Depending all stages of life, same with the man. We all want the connection. We all want the same thing. And there's the different challenges depending on your stage of life, sure. But it's actually very, very um, manageable. You just have to know how and you yeah. know, ultimately figure out where you land and what you want. And so yeah. that's what I want to bring a message of hope. And again, there. glad that you're all here. Thank you. There you go. There you go. And then Allison Jane is going to help bring us home. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't think I'm the last one though, right? No, I'm, you're not. You're, no, we've oh, got another street to go down. We're we're on, we're on the like final block. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, you're yeah. starting the final block. Sorry. And I, you know, I'm I'm also grateful to my panelists, to y'all for coming out. I'm not going to say too much more about that, but what I do want to add too is that. This came together from a very sort of vague idea that Tamara had of yeah. oh, some really great guests. I'm going to bring you all together and let's see what happens. And out of nothing, we created this really cool thing and we and hopefully we can continue it and we can continue the uh, momentum with it. So thank you all for coming and sort of bringing our dream to life that we started crafting only about six weeks ago. So it's super exciting. Thank you, girl. And then and then my Dodger fan buddy, Mr. Dating Intelligence. What's up, Mr. Lewis? Hi, thanks, guys. Um, great two-day conference and summit that we've done. I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of this with all you great panelists in the dating and relationship space and sex space. But everyone who's here, the only the one thing that I want to say is that everyone here is here for a reason because you either have questions or you want to get better at something. So always, one of the things that I say is just always continue to ask those questions and ask them of your, whether you're with a partner, whether you're single, whether you're in the dating space or whatever, always ask the questions because what I always say is that person is either going to say yes or no. You're going to be able to get a lot farther in your relationships and a lot farther in dating if you just ask the right questions. A lot of times mm -hmm. people are afraid to ask those questions and now you're just going on hearsay or, 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 or possibilities. So, yes. but if you ask the questions, you get your answer. It makes your, you know, your, um, journey a little bit smoother. So I just want to say, just thank you for all being here and just checking us all out. You're the man. Thanks buddy. And then the brains of the operation, <laughs> Tamara. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say thank you for everyone to come. And I think we should definitely do this again, as we all said. So well, part two show will be back to, we'll get some other, of my guests on that couldn't make it this time. So we'll spread the wealth and share it with everyone. So thank you again. Uh, you did a great job. And then I will say thank you for everybody who attended both nights. I hope, uh, you know, that if you didn't get something from, from this, then we need to have a different fucking conversation. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the the panel was like one of the best not just a group of people that you could have in the room but the smartest people you could have in the damn room i learned something just about every time almost everybody opened their mouths there was this one time gary said something i was like what five guys what are you saying bro come on let's go eat all right what's happening i mean i'm just a clown who does a, a podcast about about the weird dating experiences you guys are all fixing them while i'm sitting there just going tell me your broken story but thank you so much for just allowing me to uh to be a part of this this was fucking awesome so i appreciate every one of you guys tremendously and just keep in touch and we'll do this again now let me just say the heartbeat of it all. He's going to say something silly, I'm sure. Not bringing sexy back because that motherfucker never left. <laughs> Close it out, Gary. Thank you, everybody. We're three minutes past the hour. Thank you for spending time with us. We love you. Thank you for being willing to join us. And we will see you on the next one. Keep in touch on the socials. You'll be able to see when the next event is. Thank you and have a great night. <laughs> Thank you for being along for the ride of Swipe, the Swipe Wrong podcast. Remember, everyday people telling everyday stories of the Swipe Right world. Uh, the show is uh, produced by Jay Pelham. He is the host of Pelham Place. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Also, I am uh, Chaos, the host of Chaotic Commentary. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, tell a friend about the pod. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, something that you want to share, please, please, we want to hear from everybody and get everybody's stories as much as we possibly can. Uh, email us at swipewrongpod at gmail.com. Uh, give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know if it's okay to call you back. 317-426-6616. Thanks for being along for the ride. And next week, uh, the saga continues. <laughs>